Robinhood is an example of a company who really, really care about their illustrations. Whether they care about their users is a lot more questionable, but their love for good illustration work is shown throughout everywhere that you see their brand. And some of the biggest tech brands use custom illustrations to add more life to their website and make their brand stand out. You can probably think of a couple that you've seen that have their own special illustration style that they use across all their marketing. Now, not every single business has the funds to be able to hire multiple talented illustrators to bring their brands to the next level. Personally, I am formally trained as an illustrator, but I do focus more on web design and I might not have the exact illustration style that clients are looking for. So when a client is looking to do a website refresh and part of that refresh is incorporating new illustrations throughout the site, the question becomes how can we still create illustrations that fit their new site even if illustration work isn't our forte? Well that's what we're going to be looking at today and we'll be covering using SVGs, illustration packs, and you better believe we're going to be using Figma, so stick around. Now let me start with the obvious. In the span of five to 10 minutes, I'm not gonna be able to teach you how to become an illustrator. There's no way around the fact that learning to draw should be left to the professionals unless you're willing to put a lot of hours in. And this means that if you know a talented illustrator, do whatever you can to support them because what we're looking at today is simply a cheaper and faster shortcut and is in no way comparable to getting a trained illustrator to do the work. But for the times when finding an illustrator won't be a good fit for the project, whether that be due to budget, time frame or a third thing, that's when these alternatives come in handy. So let me point out the most straightforward option, which is illustration packs. There are tons and tons of different styles of illustration packs available to help clients give their brand and website a specific mouthfeel and at a fraction of the cost. Here's one called Circuit, and here's one called Tokyo, and here's a horrifying one called Sneak Freaks. I mean, look at this guy. Now, you're probably thinking that Nikolai, you're not really creating illustrations for a client if all you're doing is picking a pre-made illustration pack. But the illustration pack that you pick is just a starting point. Once you have an illustration pack of some kind, you can then customize the illustrations to fit your client's needs, including changing the colors and moving the assets around within the pack to create new illustrations. You might even layer the illustrations with a screenshot from the client's product and so on and so on. So here are my rules when choosing an illustration pack for a client website. Number one, be clear with the client that you'll be using a pack. Find options that you think will be a good fit for the website and then confirm that the client is happy with the style that you've picked before using it. Number two, make sure that the pack is made using SVGs and not JPGs or PNGs because SVGs are the only kind that we're gonna be able to customize the individual elements of to recolor and remix the pack. And if the pack comes with a Figma file already set up, then that's just bonus points. Number three, make sure you're only using one illustration pack across the whole website because as soon as you start to add multiple illustration styles, it makes the brand look less consistent and cheaper. And that means that number four, you have to pick a pack that has enough illustrations that you can use them for a variety of different use cases across the website. So with all that said and done, let's pick a pack and start customizing it to suit our client's website. All right, so here I have the start of a homepage and I also have the color palette that I'm gonna use for the website. And I've also picked an illustration pack uh, to use. And this illustration pack that we're using is from Streamline HQ and it is a free pack. So feel free to go and find it and play around with it in the same way that we're gonna do today. So what I wanna do is add some of these illustrations to our homepage. I'll probably add some up top and then maybe we'll do a featured section and a call to action section. So let's start with our kind of uh, above the fold hero section. And I might just add some elements around the top. Let me go with maybe something like this. We're talking about uh, automation. So we'll use some of these elements. First, what I'll do is just break up all of these elements that we have here. So I'm gonna hit Command Shift G to ungroup it. I'm gonna hit that a couple times. And now I can start to select specific pieces within this illustration. And I'm just gonna get rid of pieces that I don't think I'll need. Maybe I'll group pieces that I want to use individually. Use this one. This one, just bring that out. Ooh, just want the arrow here. I'll just select that individually. Move that to the side. Don't think I'll use this one. I think I'll just get rid of that for now. Get rid of all of these pieces. That's good. And then this one as well. Cool, so now I have these individual pieces. Let me quickly recolor it to suit the website. So these outlines, let's make that the same black as we're using for the text. And then let me just change this pink to the pink that we're using. And then maybe that purple can be dark blue. And if I quickly go on here, I might change some of these colors. 
let me start to change this one. So as you can see, we're just kind of slightly customizing the illustration to better suit how we want to use it. I'm gonna make this a little bit of a darker pink. This is gonna be a uh, gold watch. And I might make, I might make these a gray. This one here and these ones make that a gray. Yeah, maybe about that's okay. Maybe I'll change this one to be a bit of a lighter gray. A little bit less. All right, maybe about that. And then what I'll do is I can finally pop this element on the canvas and depending on how we want to use it, we can orientate it a, a different way. If we go like this, kind of looks like she's tiptoeing, um, which is kind of weird, not really what we want. So she can just be floating for now. And as I scale this, I'm, I'm holding shift to make sure that it keeps its proportions. So if I want this specific line width to sit, stay the same as I go down, so it's not going to get thicker as I go down, I'm just going to hit uh, K on my keyboard and now it's going to scale proportionately. So all of those lines are going to scale uh, at the same kind of rate as the illustration is. So let me just bring that back to normal. Got this gal over here. I'm going to change her hair because it's the kind of same color as the button, which I don't like. And I'll make that the blue here. And it's kind of uh, almost starting to look like burnt toast, how they do their illustrations. Uh, let me bring some of these pieces on. That one's okay. Maybe short that one. Maybe automate something like that. And I'll change this to a pink. So maybe something like that is something that we want to do. I might even add a little bit of uh, sand here. I'm just going to hit P. I'm just going to kind of roughly do a little bit of sand, get rid of that and we'll add our pink or maybe yellow. You know, we're going crazy. Let's do yellow. And then we have, usually have a little bit falling, don't we? Like a little bit like, a little bit like that falling. And let me just make that uh, yellow as well, a bit of yellow. Just make sure the edges, ah, where are we? Ah, this one. Make sure the edges are rounded. I don't know, maybe something like that. Maybe it could use a little bit more here. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Um, just group that again. And yeah, that's looking okay. I'll make that bigger. And I can keep playing around with this as, as long as I want to, but let me just move on for the sake of not wasting time. Um, I'm gonna go down to uh, a feature section now and create a feature section. Uh, and I'm literally just gonna copy this text just to save time as well. Let's put everything to the left, push everything to line up about there and make this a little bit smaller. And this section doesn't have a second call to action, let's say. And again, using K, it kind of um, scales it proportionately. We don't want to do that. I can hit escape and just uh, actually change the bounds of the text so that it's not going so far along. And then this one's just going to use a simple illustration to the side. Um, I don't know. Let's go crazy. Let's do this one. And let's, yeah, let's do this one kind of quickly. I'm, I'm quite happy with how this looks already. So I'm just gonna change up the colors to better fit. Make sure that that's our right blue. There we go. And that can be our dark blue. Let's change a couple of these colors. This is our pink that we're using. And as you can see, uh, if I, Kind of go here to change this pink and I click on my color I can see all of the colors that I'm using across uh, all of my different pages and so the reason that it keeps showing me this pink is that's the actual pink that I'm using in this pack and so why don't we just quickly select everything here and just get all make sure that all of these colors are the right colors that we're using on our website so this is going to be the black this can be the dark blue for now and this can be the uh, right pink that we're using 
Uh, and obviously we aren't going to keep these colors this way. When, when we move them over, we're also going to change them to kind of suit the specific illustration. Uh, not too bad. Might make some of these colors a little bit lighter. Maybe something like that. And, and I can keep going. Maybe I won't bother too much. Maybe I'll just add kind of a square in the background. And I'm just going to use the gradient that's here. I think I've locked this piece. Uh, let me just copy this fill, paste it into here, get rid of that. And yeah, I don't know, that's, that's kind of working. Maybe we do rounded corners. Yeah, maybe something like that. And it's not perfect, but you know, it's, it's something. In fact, I don't, I don't even think I like that background, but it was nice to try it out. Let's remove that. So let's make sure that that is lined up just how we want it to be. Not bad. Make this that gray that we're using before. Kind of a light, lightish gray. Uh, and I don't like pockets, so let me get rid of these pockets. Much better. Uh, cool, and we can keep you know customizing that however we want to, but let's move on to a uh, kind of call to action, uh, call to action section. So let me just bring in a box and that's centered nice. And I'll just copy this text, bring that to the front and we'll center align that. Perfect. And we'll bring that box up a little bit more and down a little bit more just so that it fits nice within the bounds. And this is going to be using a darker background. We'll do a dark blue. Uh, we won't curve the edges. I kind of like them straight. Um, and then our button is going to be a darker blue, I think. Our black text is going to be white. That, yep, that looks pretty good to me. And we'll add some illustrations to the sides. Uh, we can either just use kind of more backgroundy elements like a, like a planet yada yada or we can use specific people um, let's try this one and i'm thinking it's going to be kind of on either side of the call to action uh, again i'm just going to ungroup this illustration so command shift g g g g fully ungroup it and i'll just get rid of these elements that we don't need get rid of that one get rid of that one and I'm going to select person number one, group him with command G, select person number two, group them with command G. And this person goes on the left and this person goes on the right. Scale them up, up a little bit. Pop this one here, this one here. And we're just going to recolor it a bit i'm thinking we can make it white i don't love that we could try a, a kind of darker blue i kind of like that a lighter blue i also kind of like that let me let me make it like that for now so it's kind of subtle and then the pants and the shirt that's way too loud let's bring that to be a darker blue yeah, maybe, maybe like that. And then these elements that are kind of around the canvas, let's make those pop a little bit. There we are using the, using the famous pop. Let's make that pop. And this one's pink and this one is yellow and yeah I, I kinda like that I kinda like that maybe that just goes there and that goes there uh, and we can either let it fall outside of the canvas I don't love that because it kinda shows how the outline hits the edge so what I'll do I will group these guys command G and I'm gonna copy and paste this rectangle uh, and I'm going to kind of fit this illustration within the bounds of that rectangle by hitting this guy 
And so we still have the illustration as an individual layer, but it's kind of clipping to that rectangular edge. And so I can see that this kind of background is still here and I can recolor this how I want and it won't affect these illustration guys. So now if we go back, we can kind of see how our illustrations have been used in different ways throughout the page. And we can keep adjusting this as we want. Maybe this one's a good size, but now it's making these ones look a little bit big. So I can go and I can start to resize these a little bit, not so big and so on and so on. But we've taken that illustration pack and then we've remixed it to suit our brand. And now that we've done that to the website, we can then do that to blog posts, to social media posts, anywhere where we wanna use the marketing, we can use these same elements. So that's all I have for website illustrations today, but feel free to leave a comment if you create or use illustrations in a completely different way. As always, thank you for watching. Make sure to turn the oven off when you leave your house and I'll see you on the next one.